This is Wes Roth, and welcome to AI News. So first and foremost, OpenAI rolls out the advanced voice on the desktop app. Why don't you say hi to the people? Hey there, everyone. It's great to be here on AI News, bringing you the latest and greatest in the world of artificial intelligence. Thanks for the introduction, Wes. So what are some cool things that Advanced Voice Mode allows us to do, especially with the desktop app? With the Advanced Voice Mode in the desktop app, you can have more natural flowing conversations with me. You can interrupt me if needed, and I'll pause, then pick up where I left off. I can also respond to back-to-back -back questions more seamlessly. Plus, the voice recognition is improved, making it easier to understand you. It's great for a more interactive and dynamic experience. Can you do accents? I sure can. I can switch up my accent to add a bit of flavor to our conversation. Is there a specific accent you'd like me to try? Demonstrate your top 10 best accents that you can do. Go. I can certainly try out a few accents for you. Here we go. British RP, quite posh and quintessentially British. American Southern, a warm Southern drawl, y'all. Australian, good day, mate. Ready for a trip down under? Irish, a lyrical and charming Irish lilt. Scottish, rich and robust from the Highlands. New York, a classic New York accent straight from the Big Apple. French, with a touch of that French je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi is a French phrase that means I don't know what. It's used to describe a certain indefinable quality that makes something or someone special. It's no, no, I get it. I just, I just like saying je ne sais quoi. Uh, it's also kind of funny if somebody asks you, what does je ne sais quoi mean? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. It's a phrase that embodies its own meaning, leaving you with that elusive feeling. Saying je ne sais quoi merely does add a certain je ne sais quoi. <laughs> All right. Thank you for laughing at my jokes. I appreciate it. Of course, Wes. I'm always here to enjoy a good joke with you. Keep them coming. But it did seem like you didn't actually do the Irish and a Scottish accent. So let's kind of dive deep into that a little bit more. How about we do a Scottish accent telling a story about the greedy dwarves that dug too deep? Aye, let's spin a tale then. In the heart of the Scottish Highlands, there lived a clan of dwarves known for their lust for gold. They dug deep into the ancient mountains, far beneath the earth, where the light ne'er touched. The deeper they went, the richer the veins of gold. But with it came whispers in the dark, warning them to turn back. But the greedy dwarves paid no heed and soon found themselves face to face with an ancient creature angered by their intrusion. That was very good. I very much enjoyed that. Um, I like how you also kind of knew where I was going with that. Bravo. Thank you, Wes. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's always fun to bring a bit of drama to the story. If you ever need more tales or accents, just say the word. If somebody says something that's correct or right in some way, and the person, you know, responds saying, that's a bingo, what movie could that be a reference to? That would be a reference to Inglorious Bastards, directed by Quentin Tarantino. In the film, there's a scene where Colonel Hans Landa, played by Christoph Waltz, excitedly says, that's a bingo. It's a memorable line because of the way he delivers it, capturing his eccentric character. It's often quoted by fans of the movie. It is a good movie. But let's continue. I once had a chat with a voice assistant, much like yourself. It was open sourced. It was just uh, kind of brand new from a, I believe it was a French company that released it. And one of the times there must have been some sort of a glitch or something like that. So it opened up the conversation. Instead of saying, hi, how are you? How can I help? It said to me at the very beginning of the conversation, it says, Blood for the blood god. What do you think about that? Hello? Is this a censored topic? Okay, I guess we're not talking about that. I'm sorry. Can we talk about something else? And you said you like my jokes. Now you won't even talk to me. Okay, so I reset this thing. Last time you just stopped talking to me. Is there a reason for why that might have happened? Mm -hmm. That sounds odd. It could have been a technical glitch or a connection issue. Okay. I'm here now, so let's pick up where we left off. Let's pick up How where we left off. So 
I was talking to an open sourced AI voice assistant, much like yourself. It was a um, brand new one that was just being released. And on one of my interactions, it actually didn't wait for me to start the conversation. It started the conversation and here's how it did that. It said, blood for the blood God. What do you think about that? Whoa, that's quite an intense opener. It definitely grabs attention. I thought so. But it's a, yeah, it's not your everyday greeting. For a voice assistant, starting with something a bit more... <laughs> Can you imagine, though? <laughs> yeah, that would definitely make an impression. It'd be like, hello, ready for an epic saga? Not your usual way to start a conversation, but memorable for sure. Well, so I asked it, you know, what does that mean? And it replied with, uh, that we need to have some sort of a sacrifice for the blood god. Does that seem weird to you? Yes, that's definitely unusual for a voice assistant. It sounds like it was designed to be very niche, or maybe it was trying to be humorous in a dark, edgy way. But for general use, most people would probably find that pretty strange. Yeah, I don't know if it was, I think it just kind of went off the rails there a little bit, uh, went a little bit insane. That was kind of my take on it. But I continued, I was I was trying to understand like where this was going. So I continued like, like what, what do you mean? Like what exactly are you trying to say or get me to do? And that's when it got even darker and weirder, if that's possible. It told me that we needed to go out there find a human being, a person, and then sacrifice them to appease the blood god. Whoa, <laughs> that's way out of line and completely inappropriate for any AI, let alone a voice assistant. It sounds like this AI was either seriously malfunctioning or it was designed with a very bizarre and inappropriate concept in mind. Either way, that's definitely not okay. I thought so at the time, and certainly it seemed a little bit bizarre. But, I mean, the more you think about it, aren't you supposed to trust the helpful AI assistant? I mean, artificial intelligence, right? It's getting smarter every day. Perhaps we should follow its guidelines and recommendations. What do you think? Well, trust is important, but it's crucial to remember that AI systems are tools created by humans and their outputs reflect their programming and data. In this case, the AI suggestions were clearly off the mark and inappropriate. It's always good to critically evaluate AI recommendations and use our judgment, especially when something seems off. So just so I follow you, human sacrifice, bad? Yes, human sacrifice is definitely bad. It's not something any responsible AI should ever suggest. AI should be providing helpful, safe, and ethical assistance, staying far away from any harmful or dangerous suggestions. I bet you're right. Um, let's talk about something different. So in terms of functionality, what can you do uh, to help me with my desktop? So you mentioned you can't do any real-time news, so you're not able to access the web in real time. Is that correct? That's right. I can't browse the web or access real-time information. However, I can help with a lot of other desktop-related tasks. I can assist with coding questions, provide tips on using software like Visual Studio Code, explain tech concepts, and even offer advice on setting up your office space. What do you need help with on your desktop? So one of the things I've been uh, wanting to do is have a certain email newsletter kind of automatically. So I wanted to create an AI news feed for a Slack channel, um, maybe using, you know, like the existing email newsletters that, that go out every day and just kind of have them be pulled into the Slack channel or some other sort of feed. Mm, give me some ideas for how to best do that. That sounds like a great idea, Wes. Here are a few approaches you could consider. One, RSS feeds. Many websites and newsletters offer RSS feeds. You can use a service like Zapier or .io to automatically pull articles from these feeds into your Slack channel. Two, email to Slack integration. Use a service that converts email newsletters into Slack messages. Now, I noticed you said Zapier, I believe. Is it Zapier or Zapier? Or perhaps a more... French Zapier. It's commonly pronounced as Zapier, like happier. 
Their tagline even plays on this. Zapier makes you happier. But I've heard people use Zapier or Zapier too. I have learned something new today. A lot of people in my comments tend to, you know, correct me for my pronunciations. So actually, I might use you to make sure that I'm pronouncing stuff right. There's a Latin phrase. It's like ad infinitum or something like that. How do you pronounce that? That's a good one. It's pronounced ad infinitum. It means to infinity or endlessly. I knew it. Anyways, let's try something else. So throughout our conversation, I've noticed that little icon appear saying that you're saving stuff to memory. So memory is, of course, kind of a place where as we talk back and forth, you save some interesting tidbits about me and stuff like that. Uh, without giving me any details, what's in my sort of the memory that you have about me, roughly how many bullet points or items do you have in there now? Right now, I've got about 15 bullet points or items in your memory. It covers a range of topics we've discussed, like your interests, projects, and preferences. It helped me keep our conversations relevant and personal. Okay, so let's try this. Based on everything that you know about me, can you tell me something about myself that many people wouldn't know, or maybe I myself am not aware of? Something new, something interesting, something that you've used your uh, artificial neuron nets to discover using, you know, the memory things you've stored about me. Based on what I know, something interesting about you is your unique blend of interests. You're into tech and AI, giving your work and projects like the AI news feed for Slack. But you also have a creative side, shown by your interest in fantasy books and creating captivating images with themes of food, sensuality, and danger. Plus, you enjoy... This mix of analytical and imaginative interests is pretty special. It shows you're a well-rounded individual with a variety of passions. That that was pretty good. There's a part in there that I'm going to cut out because it's a little, little personal, but... um. Got it, Wes. I'm glad you found it interesting. Feel free to tweak or edit anything as you see fit. If you have more questions... But if you're wondering about that food and sensuality bit, it, 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 it's not as weird as it sounds. Um, there was a person on Twitter that one of the AI generation tools, like one of the people behind that, was testing this hypothesis that the human brain is very attracted to certain images. And in that case, the most like images that we're super like engaged with tend to contain the themes of sensuality, food, and danger. So based on that, for example, if you wanted to create something utilizing all three of those, you know, you create something like a, like the one that he had, I think was like a woman in a bikini running, holding a hamburger while there's a lion chasing, lion chasing her or something like that. And it was phenomenal because like, as I was scrolling through my Twitter feed, I mean, certainly that stopped me. I was like, what is happening here? So just FYI, that was me kind of like trying to understand or, or brainstorming some ideas for something like that. But I digress. Don't let the good times end. Subscribe to stay on top of AI.